Looking for a guaranteed way to create content that resonates with your audience? Start a podcast, interview your ideal clients, and let them choose the topic of the interview. Because if your ideal clients care about the topic, there's a good chance the rest of your audience will care about it too. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to the B2B Growth Show, a podcast dedicated to helping B2B executives achieve explosive growth. Whether you're looking for techniques and strategies or tools and resources, you've come to the right place. I'm Jonathan Green. And I'm James Carberry. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. We are here today with Andrew Breen. He is the president of Outshine. Andrew, how are you doing today? I'm great. James, how are you? I'm fantastic, man. I'm really excited to chat with you today. We're going to be talking about cross-channel remarketing, and you've got several things that we're going to talk about. Specifically, we're going to talk about five mistakes that B2B marketers are making as it relates to remarketing. Um, and, and I was reading through these earlier. They were really eye-opening to me, so I think our, our listeners are going to get a ton of value out of it. But before we dive into that, Andrew, can you just give a little bit of background as to what is Outshine? And what are you guys all about over there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we work with B2B, mostly SaaS companies, and really focus on the advertising and analytics space. You know, we don't build websites. We don't do content. We really help our customers drive pipeline with advertising and, and analytics, which is why we're able to, you know, we're really kind of obsessed with remarketing because it really does tie kind of the analytical side and the advertising side together. Mm. Okay. And we do find most of our clients kind of have a, a long sales cycle. So staying in front of them throughout that cycle is, is really important. And remarketing really can do that effectively. Yeah, that totally makes sense to me. So Andrew, to kind of jump right in in talking about remarketing, the first question to just kind of lay the foundation, I think, is kind of go a little bit deeper as to why remarketing is so important. And, and then from there, we can go a little bit further. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we think remarketing is really integral to uh, a modern kind of digital advertising strategy because as most people listening to the podcast will know, only a small percentage of your web traffic initially is going to convert. You know, we typically see about one to three percent. So all of that money and that effort and those marketing time that you spent getting that other 97 percent there, well, that effort is lost if they don't come back to your site. So Remarketing allows you an opportunity to kind of stay in front of those previous visitors as they're kind of, you know, answering questions and figuring out things for themselves and kind of going through that customer journey. So in a way, you know, remarketing is it's almost like insurance, right? Like you've, you've spent the time on your advertising or your marketing and remarketing is a way to ensure that those aren't lost. I have started uh, playing around with remarketing and it's, it's fascinating to me the results that you can drive when you really get it dialed in and do it right. And so that, that kind of leads me to my next question for you, Andrew. You know, since I've dabbled with it, yeah. I haven't played around with it enough to where it's really been, you know, hyper effective. I haven't dialed it in like that. And so my question to you is kind of what does effective remarketing look like? Are there any examples you can share that kind of paint a picture of, you know, what does remarketing look like in an ideal kind of scenario? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. And, you know, I will say too, like, I think even simple remarketing is absolutely better than no remarketing at yeah. all. So I wouldn't want to deter people from trying it out, but we wanted to kind of paint the picture of, of how things can work because some of our clients are seeing huge success for it. So I'll give you an example. For most people's websites, you know, organic traffic is your number one traffic source. So a lot of times people either they're coming in because they've heard of your brand before or they might be searching for uh, you know an answer to a problem. So let's say you sell uh, sales performance software okay. and someone is Googling a question they have about uh, a question about sales operations and you happen to come up organically with a blog post that kind of answers a question that they might have. Mm. Now, they might not know who your company is. And frankly, they might not even know that, you know, sales performance software is a thing. They're just looking for an answer to a question. Okay. So more than likely, you know, someone will, they'll come to the blog, they'll read, uh, your blog post and they'll get kind of the answer they're looking for and go about their day. You know, they're not really thinking, do I need sales performance software at this point? But what remarketing allows you to do is start, you know, infiltrating their world, so to speak. And, you know, I'll say as well, 
you know, remarketing is really effective at making people think your company is bigger than it is. And when you're trying to sell into enterprise, that can make like a really big difference. Yeah. So, you know, they've, they've come to your blog, they haven't done anything, uh, they left. So one thing that, you know, we would do right away is remarket to them on Facebook, you know, and you might have an, uh, an ebook offer, you know, about, uh, data challenges within sales operations. You know that they're interested in sales operations because they write your blog post. And this ebook might show them some, some challenges, kind of show them some of the problems that they're facing and kind of tease them with some solutions as well. Okay. So, you know, they, they've seen your ad on Facebook, they click it. Ideally, they, they go to the site and they're kind of, now they're in your, your CRM. Well, that's awesome because now you can start doing things with CRM data and start putting them on different remarketing lists. So, you know, if you think about their customer journey at this point, now they've had a problem. They now that know the problem is, is, you know, uh, something that software can solve, but they still don't know you from your competition really. So at this point, you might want to serve them, let's say a video testimonial on, on YouTube, like a pre-roll from a satisfied client. Or you could promote a case study on Twitter. So you're really trying to sell them at this point on why you're the best solution for this problem that they're now aware of. Got it. So the idea of, of cross channel is really to take advantage of all the different remarketing opportunities that you have at, you know, at your fingertips as a, a marketer and, you know, really kind of hit people on the platforms that they're on. Cause some people, you know, I, I'm a Facebook guy personally. I know some people love Twitter. Some people love, you know, surfing the internet. I'm more of a Reddit guy. So if you just focus on certain channels, you're probably going to miss out on a big swath of your audience. So we really think that the cross channel makes a lot of sense because it allows you to market to people where they are natively. Mm, okay, that makes sense. So I want to spend the rest of our time together, Andrew, really honing in on these mistakes that you see a lot of B2B marketers making as it relates to remarketing. And you alluded to this first one. This first one is only using standard channels and, and not testing out kind of non quote unquote non business channels like Facebook. Yeah. Can you dive a little bit deeper into that mistake and, and why do you think people you know, fall into that and, and what are they missing out on by only using kind of this, this standard channels? Yeah. So I wanted to start with that because that is still the mindset that we come up against most often is that B2B marketers think that, oh, well, you know, Facebook isn't a B2B channel, so we shouldn't be on there. And it's crazy to me to think that way because, you know, 99% of digital advertising growth is coming from either Facebook or Google. So to think that, you know, your audience isn't on there is, is I think is crazy. A mistake. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you know, at best it's an unfounded assumption and at worst it's a big missed opportunity for your business. Mm. Okay. So, you know, we really like Facebook just because, you know, the, the ads are beautiful. They've done an incredible job of integrating, you know, marketing into their platform in a, less intrusive way than other channels. Yep. You know, the standard ads look great. Their carousel ads look great. The videos are great. And the cost per click as compared to other channels is much lower. Yeah. So really we encourage our customers to, you know, start with AdWords because typically that's kind of your, your entry, your gateway drug, so to speak. But then from there, add in Facebook and, you know, place your pixels to see if people are coming to your site from Twitter and if you really want to get creative, you can go to like Yahoo, Gemini, or, um, you know, even Pinterest. We like to try to go to places where other people aren't because that's where you can drive a lot of value. But, you know, even at the simplest form, if you're doing AdWords remarketing, do Facebook as well. Got it. Okay. So moving to this next mistake that you see a lot of B2B marketers making, the mistake number two is only using website signals. Talk to us about what that means. Yeah. So, you know, when remarketing kind of as a concept first came out, it was really limited to make like basically creating your audiences and, and marketing to people based on what they did on your website. So for example, if certain people went to your services page, you could remarket in a certain message to them if, versus if people went to your blog, that sort of thing. And that's still great, but there's so many opportunities that, you know, remarketing has really expanded in both like breadth and depth. And there's some really exciting stuff that you can do that not a lot of people are aware of right now, which is why, you know, I wanted to hop on this podcast and kind of evangelize this idea. Yeah. So the thing we're most excited about right now is using Clearbit data. Okay. And the really cool thing about Clearbit is that it de-anonymizes website visitors. So 
you know, if someone comes to your website and they fill out a form, well, great, you kind of have their information. But if they come to your website and they don't do anything and then they leave, well, you only know like a, a very little bit of information about them. Yeah. But with Clearbit, you can start understanding, you know, what industry they're in, what company size they're in, this sort of thing. And you can start segmenting that way. Okay. So let's say you're uh, enterprise B2B SaaS and you serve a, a variety of markets. Well, you could have different remarketing audiences going to finance people versus, you know, marketing people or banking people. Um, so you can segment by industry, even if people don't fill out information and you know more about them. Same with company size. You know, a lot of our customers are, are enterprise. So you can stop your remarketing from showing to, you know, smaller companies. Okay. Another one is, is CRM data. You know, I kind of alluded to this before. So let's say someone come, you know, they come to your site and they fill out a form and they're, you know, at that point, they might be like a marketing qualified lead. But as soon as someone reviews their data and they, you know, bump them up to a sales qualified lead, well, you can switch them to a new remarketing list. So you can kind of serve them a, a different message. So the idea is to tie in your CRM data from, say, Salesforce or, or Marketo, if it's a marketing automation platform, you can do some really like advanced stuff. And, you know, it can be a little bit tricky to set up, but the ROI on it is fantastic. So we really encourage people. And is that something you can obviously only do that once you've already captured their email? Is that right? Yeah. So with the CRM data, you need them in your, your system. In your database. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's really just getting people thinking about, do you find that a lot of folks only think about remarketing to visitors that haven't quite subscribed yet and kind of the whole purpose in remarketing being to get that email address? So it's counterintuitive for them to think about remarketing to someone who they already have an email address for? Yes, exactly. So a lot of people, if they think, you know, remarketing stops once they're in the system, and I would say, no, remarketing stops potentially never. You know, we would say, you know, use one list. You know, if people haven't gotten your email system, try to get them there. Then once they're there, you know, upsell them the next thing and then keep moving them down the funnel. And even once they're already a customer or already, you know, let's say booked a demo, you can still keep remarketing to them because you want to stay top of mind as they're going through that purchase decision. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, Andrew, one question that I've always had, particularly about Facebook, because people tend to put in personal email addresses into Facebook because it's a personal platform, have you found there to be – is it hard to – you know, leveraging the, the email address that you have to break through, or I guess that would be more of a Facebook ads question, not necessarily a retargeting because the, the pixel is what tells Facebook like, oh, this person has visited this particular website. So we're going to show them this ad regardless of, of whether you have their correct email address that they use for Facebook. Is that, is that right? That's a great question. So that kind of, yeah. So it is kind of leads into my next point of, okay. of audience data. So with Facebook, you can, you can remarket two different ways. One is the, you know, the website pixel approach, but the other is with audience data, i.e. email. But the really great thing, you know, we, we get questions about match rates on Facebook a lot. Facebook has, I don't know exactly how they're doing it, honestly, but you can upload lists. They don't even have to have emails in them because they're able to match on so many different signals that the match rate is getting incredibly high. Really? So even if you have someone's business email and you might have like, let's say their name and their phone number or something, you, even if they don't link their, their business email to Facebook, they can usually still match that. Interesting. Yeah. It's gotten incredibly good at, at, at making that match. So there's a lot of different ways you can use that email data. So, you know, on, on Google, they call it customer match on Facebook. It's uh, custom audiences and in Twitter, it's tailored audiences. But all of the, it's all still the same ideas using emails to make uh, remarketing audiences. Okay. And so this third mistake, Andrew, is wasting ad budget by not negative matching audiences. Talk to us about what that means. Yeah, this is a killer. So only, you know, a small percent, well, not a small percent, but only a certain percent of people are coming to your website because they want to become a net new customer. So, you know, if you're a big company, there's a good chance you're seeing a lot of people come in because they want jobs or a lot of people doing research on your company for like investment decisions. So you should be negative matching certain patterns and behaviors so you can only market to people who are likely to become customers. Yeah, not, so, not doing retargeting to people that go to your careers page. Exactly. So that's kind of a good starting point is anyone who visits a jobs page, cancel them out. You can also do things like, um, you know, if they come in from a job board from, say, Indeed or Monster.com, you could negative match that those people. 
But as I mentioned earlier, about the, the clear bit stuff is you can start negative matching, you know, small companies or let's say, you know, charities, for example. And also you might want to negative match from certain lists people who, let's say they're already customers or they've logged into your site already, depending on, you know, if you have a limited remarketing budget, you may want to be really tactical and you may want to only remarket to people who are not customers yet. So really think about what signals can you use to negative match people. It's going to save you a lot of money. No, I love that. So Andrew, this fourth one is not being sequential. I'm excited to dive into this one. <laughs> yeah. So you know, as we kind of alluded to earlier, I think doing any remarketing is better than doing none. But really the idea here is, you know, how can you use different triggers to move people along your funnel? Mm. So it's really thinking through strategically about how you can segment your audiences to push them from not knowing who you are to wanting to buy from you. Okay. And then the tricky thing can be about like how do you place all of your pixels and understand all of those audiences across all of the different platforms. So tools like Segment can really help you kind of uh, implement your pixels in a cohesive way across platforms. Okay. But really it's about thinking through from not just like, you know, are they a customer or not, or are they a lead or not, but more nuanced than that. And, you know, how can you use things like video and all of your content you have at hand to kind of push them along that, that funnel? Mm, okay. And well, actually, one thing I want to add there as well is I kind of alluded to it earlier is like the idea of if, if someone books a demo, for example, you know, the, the marketers must say, you know, oh, let's call it a day. But a lot of times there's a long kind of, you know, if I book a demo today, I might not have it for a week and I might not make a purchase decision for another two weeks. So during that time, I think it's a critical opportunity for marketers to stay top of mind. You can, you know, you could do general branding messages. You could do stuff that really hammers home your, your company's value. So don't just think remarketing is to get people to the close. Think beyond that. Mm, no, I love and that. actually there's one thing, this is a great opportunity, like uh, an example. We had a client who had a really complicated problem that they were solving. And instead of running like a, a 60 second video that probably no one would watch, they, they used YouTube to sell, tell a sequential story. So what they did is they, they broke down their videos into six 10 second videos and they'd only show the second video if someone watched the first video. So, and so on and so forth. So you'd only see the third video if you'd seen the second video using kind of like audiences and, and negative matching. And the cool thing was the video completion rates grew significantly through each step. So, you know, by the time people got to the sixth video, they were really like engaged with this message. But if you weren't engaged with the message, you probably wouldn't get past the, the first video. Got it. Yeah. So you're not spending money showing videos to people that aren't, aren't interested at all. Exactly. I mean, you know, let's be honest. Like most people will not watch a pre-roll video beyond 20 seconds. Yep. So if you have a 60 second video, no one's going to see the, the last 40 seconds of messaging. But if you cut it up and, and tell a story in a more, in a format that's more conducive to how people use the web, you know, thinking through sequential remarketing, you can really tell your story effectively. Mm, no, I love that. So this last mistake, Andrew, that we're going to talk about today is, is not knowing the numbers. Talk to us about that. Yeah. So I think it's kind of a reflection of how like in the trenches I am is because, you know, a lot of times I talk to marketers who don't know what is and isn't possible with remarketing. And really it comes down to audience sizes. You know, all of the different ad platforms have audience minimum sizes to help protect anonymity. So, you know, if your site doesn't get a lot of traffic and there's not a lot of, let's say, actions they can take on the site, you're probably going to be pretty limited in what you can actually do. Okay. So for example, you know, let's say you have an ebook, a white paper and request a demo. Well, if you're only getting a thousand people a month and you're only getting a hundred ebook downloads, well, you can't get super kind of uh, granular with your funnel because you need certain amounts of people on each list for the list to actually run. So, you know, in Google Display, you need 100 people on your list. So 100 people would have to download your ebook before you could serve them that next ad. Got you it. know, in Google Search, actually, we didn't even talk about um, remarketing for search, which is a whole another really cool thing. But yeah, for remarketing for search, you need 1,000 people. For tailored audiences on Twitter, you need 500 you know, and Facebook, you need 20. So each platform has its different criteria. And you really have to understand that if you're trying to get strategic with this. But really, all it takes is, you know, a couple of Google searches and, and really, again, thinking through what you're trying to get people to do, and you won't get caught up. But I just always like to flag, you know, what is and isn't realistic with people, 
before they get too excited because you can't, you know, ideally we could do one-on-one remarketing, but we just we can't do that because, you know, understandably Facebook, Google, Twitter want it. So it's not creepy to people. No, that, that makes perfect sense. So Andrew, this has been fantastic. I think you've shed light on, on, on a lot of questions that people have and a lot of beliefs that people have about remarketing that are false because you're, you're living and breathing in this every single day. So I appreciate you sharing this with our listeners. If there's somebody, maybe they want to dig further into this. Maybe they want to, talk more about search remarketing. What's the best way for them to get in contact with you? And then also, how can they learn more about Outshine and and how they can possibly work with you guys on that side as well? Yeah, absolutely. I love talking shop with anyone. Just drop me an email. It's andrew at outshine.ca. And uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about the company, it's just outshine.ca. And yeah, just drop me an email. I'd love to hear from anyone because I, you know, like you said, live and breathe this stuff. And You know, a lot of smart marketers are trying to do some really amazing stuff. And sometimes you can get tripped up with what isn't as impossible and actually technically implementing it. And we help companies do that. I love it. Andrew, again, this has been incredible. So I really appreciate your time today, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Take care. If you've been getting value from this podcast, you can help us reach more people by reviewing the show on iTunes. Here's how you can leave a review in less than a minute. Open your podcast app and tap the search icon in the bottom right corner. Type in B2B Growth, then select our show. Once you're there, tap the Reviews tab and tell us what you think of the show. These reviews help us out a ton. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.